Hello, everyone. Today is Friday, July 22nd, 2022. My name is Evan, and I want to welcome you back to another edition of Stock Market Weekly, episode 641, presented by The Trade Risk, where it is our job to break down the most important trends, price action, and noteworthy moves that you may have missed this week across financial markets. Now, if you're brand new to this video series, here's how they work. We break up our analysis into two parts. In part one, we look at everything that went on this week. We comb through the numbers and pick apart everything that stands out, looks different or interesting. And then in part two, we jump into the charts. We take a very close look at price action and the bigger trends that we want to be paying attention to and try and best position ourselves looking ahead. So hopefully that sounds good to you. Let's jump into some of the headlines and takeaways from this week. It's a busy week and next week's going to be even busier. So we got a lot to prep on. First off, we had an upside breakout week for stocks. Stocks have been consolidating up and down in this 3-4% range back and forth for the past month. And we got that upside breakout. We lost a little momentum on Friday, but we'll talk about that in part two. We saw uh, or we've, we're seeing a, a mostly positive reaction to earnings so far. So we're in earnings season. Most responses have been pretty good. Even if the numbers or the guidance hasn't been that great, the market reaction has, for the most part, been pretty constructive. There's obviously some notable um, uh, cases where that's not been the situation. I'm thinking of Snapchat. I'm thinking of IBM and, and Verizon. So we're going to talk about some of those companies later in this video. We got the VIX at three months lows. We got commodities at new lows here. We've got the yield curve, which looks more and more upset as the days go on. And we've got uh, some analysis we're going to be breaking down about the Fed and what to expect next week. So let's jump into it. Let's jump into the numbers here. You can see right hand column. That's the one week numbers. You can see it was a, a very strong week and we saw basically, you know, uni unanimous or, or pretty steady performance here across all of the major indices. You can see in the mo one month numbers now we're in firm green territory here. So bulls are starting to get a little bit of progress made over these longer periods. Now, speaking of that, if we take a look at trends in the market, the overall trend that we're looking at in this particular instance is just the 10 period simple moving average, 50 SMA and the 200 SMA. And we're looking at whether or not that moving average is rising or declining. So in other words, over that look back period, are prices on the general decline or are they advancing? And so over the past few weeks, we've seen the 10 SMA you know, mostly rising. It got a little choppy at times, but generally speaking, those short-term trends were starting to transition higher. For the first week though, we have the 50 SMA in the NASDAQ and in the Russell 2000 that is just starting to turn up. Now, this moving average is very, very flat. So honestly, a day of selling on Monday or you know, two days of selling is probably gonna tip this back to declining. So it's a very sort of flat, moving average at this point, but it is starting to inch up here. And that is absolutely notable just in the sense of the, the, the market environment change and the fact that we do have a little more of an equilibrium over the past month or two of trading, as we can see, of course, by this numbers, and then we can see by uh, the actual simple moving average, longer term 200 SMA still declining, and there's not gonna be any change uh, anytime soon for that one. So take note of uh, NASDAQ Russell trying to, to uh, turn itself back up. Now, volatility environment is something we look at every single week. We've been noting over the past handful of weeks here that the VIX has been very heavy. It's just been, you know, uh, sinking to new lows. Even even when we've had some choppy and some down weeks, we see the, the, the VIX just barely able to budge higher. And this week, we saw it fall down uh, about a point here in both the S&P volatility index and the NASDAQ volatility index to the lowest levels we've seen in the past handful of months. We saw the VIX at 23, and we see uh, the, the VXN here, which is NASDAQ volatility, finally crack below 30. So that was encouraging to see. It's pretty curious, though, that we've got a tsunami of catalysts next week. We've got all the big tech heavy hitters reporting earnings. We've got the Fed out. That's going to be giving their latest uh, interest rate, Fed funds rate 
uh, guidance or policy and and the market doesn't seem to care too much I don't know uh, or it seems like that might be a little bit too complacent but we'll talk more about that in part two if we take a look at 52 week highs and lows this is also another sign of some mild encouragement here not many new highs are being made yet so we're not super optimistic but the fact that the number of stocks hitting 52 week lows is starting to dry up is the encouraging factor here so what needs to happen next is that we actually start to get more stocks advancing to the upside here and start breaking out it's a pretty interesting mix when you break it down to the sector level because you know we we had energy leading the the charge here for most of this year and now energy is in a pretty uh substantial or notable decline and while tech and some of the other uh, sort of beta plays have been getting some some love over the past couple of weeks. They're still not that close to 52 week highs. So we might have some more time to wait here. Meantime, this is at least starting to stabilize, which is again, uh, a check mark for the bulls. Now, if we take a look at sector performance this week, you can see most things in the green. Consumer discretionary was the big move to the upside here, seven, almost 7% on the week, 9.32% uh, on the month. So now you can see just a very clear sort of leadership here going on by uh, consumer discretionary. We saw materials and industrials in the second spot up about 4%. On the decline this week, underperforming list, we saw utilities, healthcare, and consumer staples. So that's a very defensive tone to this market. It was basically risk on in the most aggressive sort of sectors. Now, if we take a look at correlations here, you can see that we're still uh, very tightly correlated in terms of what the indices are doing. So Dow, SPY, NASDAQ, and the Russell, and even international stocks all sort of moving in lockstep. But take a look at the dollar here. So as the dollar has finally started to pull off of highs, so we had that big reversal week last week, and then we got follow through selling this week in the dollar, that pressure is, is continuing to support these higher stock prices. And uh, that correlation is extremely strong at this point, negative 0.86. So almost, you know, quite frankly, almost ne almost perfectly uh, 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 inversely correlated here of what the dollar strength is doing versus what stocks are doing. And again, as I'll remind everyone, these are only 10 day correlations we're looking at. So they're very, very short. You can also see the Bitcoin, the J and K um, correlations as well to risk assets. Now, Treasury yields were the big story this week. We saw the 10-year yield fall below 2.8%. Uh, it did not close at the lows of the week. It kind of battled around two and, two, two and three quarters, I believe, was sort of the battleground level, but still uh, very, you know, sort of encouraging uh, unwind here, or just uh, still a, a pullback here in interest rates. We've said it for a while here that generally speaking here, not to oversimplify things, but seeing interest rates kind of pull back and stabilize and cool off is going to be good for tech and growth and uh, lots of the, the um, longer duration sort of uh, equities in the market. And, and that's certainly translated over the past couple of weeks. Last but not least here is the dollar and commodities. So um, natural gas just absolutely running away from uh, everyone else this week, 16.71% to the upside. This is such a volatile um, uh, ETF here and uh, commodity. We're going to talk more about the chart there in part two of this video, but a uh, huge week to the upside. We also saw Bitcoin uh, continuing to break out. We saw basically, you know, this, this textbook um, in terms of being on the risk spectrum of assets start to break out. We saw sort of the smaller cryptos break out. We saw our Ethereum start to break out to the upside. Then we got the breakout in Bitcoin. Then we got the breakout in the NASDAQ and, and things happening in the stock market. So if you really just kind of think about the wheel of risk and, and being out on the, on the, you know, high end of risk, you really saw that the, those assets start to break out and lead the charge. And then you saw it sort of fall into into place there in, in U.S. equities. So Bitcoin up 9%. Crude oil was up. Gold had a, a little bit of a rebound week, which was nice to see. Silver, the dollar, and ag were all down on the week. Dollar index down 1.32% which is why, again, uh, when we looked at those correlations, we saw stocks doing so well. So 
that is it for the free version of this video. As you might remember here last week, we switched over to a premium model for the extended content. And we've got a lot to talk about this week. We're going to look at um, some of the uh, Fed uh, estimates for next week. We're going to look at the yield curve. We're going to review some trades and look at some price action. So I invite you to subscribe to either uh, get this video here if you just need some help navigating next week, which is going to be a very busy week. You can buy a single episode, you can buy the full length of this video for five bucks. Or if you want to save some cash, you can get basically uh, four videos for the price of three. Either way, the traderist.com forward slash SMW, scroll down, you'll see uh, the links there to purchase. So thanks for tuning in. And we're going to continue on here in just a moment for subscribers. Oh,